talk about logging. Tropical forest cover has decreased dramatically over the past century, and the logging of these forests occurs in many ways. The one that we hear about most is conventional industrial logging. This way of harvesting timber occurs on a large scale and huge machines are involved, such as skidders and trucks. These machines enter the forest and damage the ecosystem and its biodiversity. But did you ever hear about another way of producing large amounts of timber called chainsaw logging? This way of harvesting timber occurs on a small scale. Uh, chainsaw operators enter the forest on foot and cut down the trees and immediately convert them to boards right next to the stump. Afterwards, workers or pack animals carry the boards out of the forest. Now that seems a lot friendlier, huh? Well, things aren't always the way they seem. Let's compare the two methods and start with the image that the WWF gives us. As you can see, the heavy machinery used with industrial logging does not only take the desired tree, but also leaves behind a path of destruction. The most obvious disturbance is in the vegetation, but the soil takes a big hit as well. Big wheels and the heavy weight of the machinery actually compresses the soil, that way affecting the texture and water content. It also displaces the nutrients. This all has an effect on seedling growth, which is particularly important after logging practices. And with chainsaw logging, these machines are not used, so you don't find this disturbance between the trees and the roads. Speaking of roads, as you can imagine, the use of heavy machinery requires the construction of roads. Also, because sawmills are conventionally outside of the forest, roads need to be constructed between the sawmill and the heart of the forest. The construction of these kind of roads has many effects on the ecosystem. First of all, road building leads to habitat fragmentation, as some species do not cross roads. This way you separate populations, affecting biodiversity. Also, roads tend to enhance edge effects. Because of the abrupt edge of a road, light intensity, temperature and humidity change, resulting in higher tree mortality. This in turn can lead to the invasion of pioneer species that are able to outcompete the climax species that are already there. Also, due to the increased accessibility of the forest area, road building often leads to the construction of illegal secondary roads, the increased occurrence of illegal logging, and to agricultural expansion. Chainsaw loggers, on the other hand, mainly use footpaths a lot and don't really need roads. This way they do not contribute as much to the biodiversity loss that is associated with road building. It's not really looking good for industrial logging, but here comes the plot twist. Since industrial logging is bound to legislation and regulated by governments, strong selectivity is used to ensure sustainability. Companies decide beforehand which trees are to be cut down and which trees are to be spared. Usually, the maximum allowable felling intensity lies at around 2 to 3 trees per hectare. Also, trees need to have a minimum diameter before they are eligible to be cut down and trees with ecological functions are deliberately spared. After logging, the forest gets time to regenerate. That doesn't sound too bad, right? Well, it's not, but the problem here lies with the chainsaw loggers. When the industrial loggers leave, the chainsaw loggers come in. These people are often locals or gangs that do not abide the laws, are often very poor and don't have a lot of ecological knowledge. They cut down the trees that are the most profitable, which are often the trees that the industrial loggers purposely left. Up to 7 additional trees per hectare are being cut down by this mode of operation, thereby having a larger effect on biodiversity than that industrial logging does. But how exactly does it influence forest biodiversity? Well, trees with ecological functions like big trees that produce a lot of seeds or house a lot of life or trees that play an important role in covering the canopy are mercilessly felled, which has an effect on the microclimate and that way on biodiversity. So alright, they overharvest a few species, but they leave the rest of the forest alone, right? Nope. Because the trees are cut down to boards right next to the stump, loggers need space. They clear the area around the tree, resulting in loads of collateral damage. All kinds of trees and shrubs are destroyed, just like with industrial logging. Also, because chainsaw logging mostly takes place in previously logged areas, the damage has a high impact, maybe even surpassing the regenerative capacity of the forest. So, both methods have downsides. But which method is most functional? Well, industrial loggers use high-tech equipment to process timber, so less of the stem is wasted than with chainsaw logging. However, they do not usually take the canopy or side branches for processing, resulting in the effective use of around 60% of the whole volume. 
chainsaw loggers take a larger portion of the tree because they also use the large branches but they process it less efficiently. The timber produced this way is of a lower quality and needs additional processing after it's been carried out of the forest. 60% of the wall volume is effectively used, just like with industrial logging. However, the waste produced from chainsaw logging is left on site and provides nutrients that are easily taken up. The waste from industrial logging, however, is partially taken to the sawmill, while the canopy remains in the forest in a form that is not easily taken up. Both industrial logging and chainsaw logging have a multitude of effects on forest biodiversity. Although industrial logging in theory works in a sustainable manner, the use of heavy machinery and road building leads to immense disturbances, fragmentation, edge effects and more. Chainsaw loggers do less damage in theory, but current practices are at least as bad, because they destroy just about everything. They overharvest and they take trees that are critical for the conservation of the forest. Nevertheless, chainsaw logging does have a lot of potential in future forest management. But the timber quality needs to increase and proper management needs to be developed. If we are able to regulate chainsaw logging, we would have the best of both worlds. On the one hand, a high timber production of reasonable quality, and on the other hand, sustainable forest management. Unfortunately, it all sounds easier than it is, because there's so much more to it than just the financial and ecological interests. Political and social factors, among others, need to be taken into account when new management is developed. But we are convinced that this can be done for the sake of biodiversity. Tune in next week for our episode on moon bears. Thanks for watching and stay classy.